Perfect. You are exactly who I was hoping to see today. Hey, Mersoft. What's up? An opportunity has presented itself for you to give back to the town. Yay. The town stores are empty, and we need them refilled as quickly as possible. Empty? Uh, where did they all go? I was... They were... That is to say, that's not really important right now. What matters is that we put them back before anyone wants to use them and notices, okay? Notices? D do you mean they were stolen? What? Oh! Oh, yes! Yes, that is exactly what happened. Will you help me refill them? I, I guess. What do you need? Wonderful. You'll need to get two iron, ten wood, and ten stone. You need to get them to me ASAP, or I'll... or we'll all be in big trouble. Did the bees make any honey yet? Be hold. <laughs> See? I told you they wouldn't sting you if you stepped up nicely. Uh-huh. Local honey is super popular. Sebastian drowns his pancakes in the stuff. And not in maple syrup? That's a breakfast crime. I know. Weird, right? <laughs> but our mom used to eat pancakes like that, too. My guess is he does it as a way of remembering her. Did your mom pass away? No. Um, I don't think so. Listen, here's some more tulip seeds. Sorry, should I not have... The more you plant, the more likely you are to attract bees. A win-win. Tell me you've got the supplies. We're running out of time here. <laughs> uh, th there's a lot to do. I'm still working on it. Well, hurry. <laughs> we don't have much time. Oh. Tell me you've got the supplies. Yes, it's right here. <laughs> Jeez, take a breath and calm down. Well, you cut it pretty close, Missy. There was no need to unsettle me so. <clears throat> well then, <laughs> here is your pay for handling this trifling matter. Thanks. So, are you going to tell me what this was all about now? Oh, sorry. I am not at liberty to discuss town business with you. Good day. We'll be able to fix up this coop, no problem. But you'll need to clear out all the trees and rocks from the area I've roped off. Got it? You come back and let me know when you've cleared out all the trees and rocks there, and then we can talk business.
I could... I brought the spirit flame potion. Well done. Be aware that the crops that thrive in spring will wilt under the summer sun. It's best you finish any tasks that still need to be done. Now, are you ready to say goodbye to spring? Yes, I am ready for some summer sun. Wonderful. Let us begin. Take your place in the circle. And so we begin the turning of the seasons, just as our ancestors have done for thousands of years. Novice, pour the spirit flame into the fire. We say goodbye to the gentle sun of spring. We welcome the golden dawn of summer. Um, yes. We turn the seasons, like they said. Oh, <laughs> uh... 
honeybee. You're here. Of course I am, Grandma. For a moment, I thought you were Robert coming to collect me. I, I felt a warm breeze. Yes, we turn the seasons. That's all. <laughs> still a skeptic, I see. But there is still so much you haven't seen. Still so much to learn and do. Oh, I've done my best to take care of Violet since her mother disappeared. Don't worry. I promise I'll be here for her. I know you will, sweetheart. You're going to do great. I'm proud of you. I'm so glad you came back to see me. <sighs> me too. I just wish we had more time. We had <laughs> time enough. <laughs> We've learned how to run the farm. I'll take good care of it for you. And I know you can bring the community and the coven together. Promise me? You'll remember everything I've taught you? I promise. You will be a marvelous witch. I can already see your powers blooming. It's time for me to rest. Take care. My beautiful little honeybee. I love you. <laughs> Goodbye, Grandma Hazel. I'll take up your mantle and protect the town. You can rest now. Today, we say goodbye to one of this town's finest citizens, Hazel Wild. Her dear friend Lena is going to say a few words. Hazel was my mentor. Yes, but she was more than that. She was always giving advice, a bowl of soup, a basket of fresh eggs. She never ever gave up on those she loved. And she loved this island more than anything. And now she's given us Terra. Oh, we are so glad you're here. It means Hazel hasn't really left us. Thanks, Lena. Hello. You're Hazel's granddaughter? I'm Wesley. I've never seen you around before. Oh, I don't live in Fairhaven. Oh, I see. So you came over on the ferry from Milkwater. Well, thanks for taking the time to come all that way. Um, of course. I wanted to come pay my respects. Hazel was a wonderful friend. Oh, um, and I uh, have this for you. I run a rare bookshop, you see. Hazel had me fix the binding on this old family heirloom. I know she would have wanted you to have it. Oh. Uh, th th thank you so much. Well, I should go. Nice to meet you, Tara. Nice to meet you, too. Wait. That's not the way to the ferry. myself. Now I can look at that book that, um, that man, Wesley, gave me? Huh. Looks like a journal. Grandma's journal. <sighs> this is her handwriting. On the front flap it says, To my dear niece, to record thoughts both mundane and magical. Vivian. Vivian was Grandma's aunt. She must have been a witch too. Here's the first entry. Today's chores took me through the portal, 
where I spoke at length with the fairies. Did she write fairies? Maybe I'm misreading the writing. Or maybe there's even more to discover on this island than I realized. Dullness binds my body tightly. Awaken me and make me sprightly. Thomas. <laughs> Your grandma? She was. Strange, for sure. But she had respect for the land. Our families were close, and Hazel was special. Yeah, she was. She always wanted you to love this place as much as she did. So, I'm gonna teach you farming for her. Great. When do we start? Right now's as good a time as any. Take these cotton seeds and plant them. But you better plant them quick. They take a while to grow and they only grow in summer. You can buy more cotton seed from me and a few other things if you need. You can grow this cotton and turn it into cloth. That makes a bit of money. Dyed cloth is even better. Come see me when you're ready to learn about making cloth. Hmm. <sighs> 
I couldn't. I've got exciting news! I've been named this year's Captain of the Summer Festival! Wow! So, does being captain mean you get to ride on a parade float? <laughs> no, but I do get to organize everything and make sure the festival is perfect. Sounds like a lot of work. Oh, it is! Francis did it one year and almost had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> hey, hon, I need your help. The festival is a day-long celebration, culminating in a big bonfire down by the beach. I need wood! Lots and lots of wood! Please bring any you can spare to Thomas. He's volunteered to help assemble the bonfire. Thanks so much! You're the best! Here's the wood for the bonfire, Thomas. Thanks. It's really nice of you to help Sophia out. If that's bait, wash ashore, I'm not biting. Well, nice talking to you, Thomas. Wait, I uh, need a favor. How can I help? The summer festival is meant to celebrate the bounty of Fairhaven. Sophia and Angus spend the whole week leading up to it cooking and baking. Sophia asked me if I'd help her with the corn for popcorn. I filled up as many of my plots as I can spare, but it won't be enough. You need me to grow corn? Yep. Here are the seeds. Five bushels ought to do it. I'll just wait until the cotton's ready. Hi, Thomas. Got something for you. I made a big batch of stew last night. Too much for just me. Oh, that's so kind. But you didn't have to do that. It's rude to refuse a gift of food, Tara. I did it once at my uncle's wedding. An elder saw me say no and let me have it. Oh, no. What did you do? I took the plate from the woman offering it, of course. Gave it to my cousin, Albie. He's always happy for seconds. I would totally have caved and eaten whatever was on that plate. You can hold on to your principles without offending your kin. Treat folks with respect and they'll return it. Well, thanks for the stew, Thomas. You're welcome. I better get back to my chores.
Morning, Parker. Can I help you with something? Well, yes, actually. Natalia told me all about the great job you did on the mine, and you know that broken bridge over yonder? Uh-huh. What'll it be? Well, some more wood and some iron from your mine would shore up the supports. The mayor's excited because a scientist with a big research grant wants to move into the old lookout post. But I just want to take walks up the mountain pass again and visit my favorite flowering dogwood trees. Okay, I'll help. Thanks. You can bring the supplies by my shop when you're ready. sense that Fairhaven's festival isn't just about the solstice. Is there a story behind it? Oh yes, there certainly is. Here, let's step outside and I'll explain. This is a statue of my ancestors, Peggy and Molly. They lived here during colonial times. Whoa, I knew your family had been here for a while. But I didn't realize just how long. One summer during the Revolutionary War, the British Navy demanded all of the town's stores. So the people of Fairhaven loaded all of their crops and livestock into a storeroom ready for transport. The next morning, the soldiers opened the doors and saw an empty storeroom. So they had to sail away empty handed. Then Peggy and Molly led the mayor of Fairhaven to the lighthouse. And there it all was. The girls swore up and down that they'd prayed on it and a miracle had happened. To this day, we still don't know how they pulled it off, but we celebrate it even if we don't understand. And here I thought this was just a statue. <laughs> oh no, it's rare that the things around us are just anything. Did something happen? We want to build the lemonade stand. That's what happened. Mommy said she would help us with the lemons and Daddy said he would help us build the stand. But we still need the wood for the stand and some sugar. <laughs> it's hard to say no to that. Plus, if you help us, we'll give you a lemonade discount. So you'll be like an investor. You can see long-term returns. Emmy's been reading a book that Daddy bought. He said it was boring, but Emmy doesn't think it's boring. What kind of long-term returns are we talking here? Uh, I don't know. I haven't gotten to that chapter yet. Well, let me see what I can do. Whee! Endless lemonade!
Should only take a day or so. I'm Tara Wild. I own the farm down the mountain path. Are you the new scientist? Oh, I think I saw your farm on my way in. Oh, it's charming. I am Giva Joshi. And yes, I am a meteorologist. I'm here to study the funny weather patterns you have here in Fairhaven. Oh, is our weather that strange? It seems pretty normal to me. Really? Well... I understand you're having a reduced rainfall compared to other areas in the region. Unusual for this time of year. Well, in any case, your mayor told me you might show me the way to town? Uh, absolutely! Uh, follow me. This is the blacksmith run by Natalia. Wait, like an actual village blacksmith? Oh, how quaint! I wonder if she could make me copper wiring for a new antenna. And here we are! The Town Hall. Oh, you must be Giva! I'm Mayor Otto Soft. Thanks for bringing her by, Tara. We have a little game we play with all new arrivals in Fairhaven. Introduce yourself to all your neighbors, and they'll let me know when you've met everyone. <laughs> You're a riot. Actually, he's serious. Oh, wait. Really? Yes! And you'll get a prize to help you get settled. Oh, you've already met Tara. So that's one down. Um, okay, why not? Should be good for a laugh, right? This island may be stranger than I thought. Uh, what was that? Oh, nothing. Ah, just the miner I was hoping to see. Have you struck silver in them dar hills yet? You know it's not hills, right? Uh, of course. Sure. <laughs> Mostly. Look, I love working with precious metals, but I have no idea how to extract them. And I need some silver for our wedding bands. If you dig up some raw ore, Natalia can turn it into an ingot that I can work- Let's see what I can find. You and Angus deserve the most- Ho oh, there! As you may have heard, we have a little tradition every summer here in Fairhaven. Yes, the uh, summer festival. I know. Well, you're right on top of things, aren't you? I like that in a citizen. Speaking of which, I could use some help. I was waiting for that. With my speech! The peak of summer is everyone's favorite time of year, and I want to capitalize on that goodwill! Do you think I should talk about history? Unity or the future? I think you should focus on the future. Optimism! <laughs> I like it! Well, I better get to writing my speech. Hey, I've heard you're helping with the summer festival. <laughs> Word gets around quickly in this town, doesn't it? Every summer, I make my giant strawberry shortcake for the whole town. It's my own personal mission to make it bigger every year. One day, I'll beat the world record. I need strawberries. Heaps and heaps of strawberries. It would be so awesome if you could spare some. Oh, I hope my flower delivery comes in time. I gave Thomas the wood you needed. Lovely. Here, this is fresh out of the oven. You deserve it. Had any luck with building that coop? Once you do, I'll be able to sell you some chick.
I think... I think... I think I better go. Awful sorry, Tara. How does she appear and disappear like that? Also, how does she know my name? There you are. I heard you might have a loom in your barn. I might. What do you need? The silk parachutes I packed for my radio sons got destroyed by a bunch of bloody moths. I've got plenty of helium for my balloons, but no way to get the hygrometer safely back to land. I understood, like, half the words in that sentence. Can you make me some silk fabric? I met a merchant who said he sets up a stolen town with items from Off Island. Maybe he has some silk thread? Oh, you mean Kai. He might have that. Oh, so you'll help me. Oh, thank you so much.
I've been reading this journal. It belonged to Grandma, and... Oh, thank goodness! Oh, I know Hazel took the journal. There are entries that mention the fairies. Does... Does Fairhaven have fairies? You still have much to learn about the magic on this island. But before I tell you more about that, you must prove that you understand us. As a coven, speak to the Farseer Witch. He will explain. Heard you've been asked to help with the summer festival. Yes, Sophia asked me to fetch wood for the bonfire. Bale fire, you mean? Witches have been celebrating the solstice with bale fires for millennia. Non-witch folk came along, kept the custom, changed the name. So it goes. We only remember part of the legend. How does the coven celebrate the festival? Oh, we join in with the rest of the town at the bale fire. Our own traditions, we keep to ourselves. Say, you got any milk and honey? What for? Oh, is it another potion? You gotta learn your summer rites, novice. We leave offerings for the Fey folk every summer. It's tradition. Okay, well, honey, I can handle. But milk, I don't have a cow. The island will provide. Are you telling me to just search for a cow? Of course not. You might be able to strike a deal with the rancher who just moved in. Your gram wasn't a fan of our masks, but rules are rules. You've got to earn our trust before we can reveal who we really are. Unless you think you can guess my name. Rumpelstiltskin. Ah, don't be calling the Fae Folk unless you mean it now. You're to complete a test. Each member of the Coven will ask you for a magical item. You're to bring it to them. Sounds easy enough. During the day, in town, if you give it to the right person, we'll say so. What? But what if I give it to the wrong person? <laughs> Won't Cameron freak out if I give him some magic doodad? Don't worry. Civilians can't read incantations. It just looks like a blank piece of paper to him. I'm to set you the first task. It has to do with time. Oh, time travel? How far back can I go? You're not ready for that yet, novice, but you can try pausing time for a moment to give you long enough to finish what you've got to do. It will only work while you're in the place you read the spell. Once you leave that space, time will resume its course. Here's what you need to write the spell. Come to me during the day when you've finished it. I picked the cotton. I should have... Oh, worn gloves. Yep. The ends of the bowls are sharp. You could have, I don't know, mentioned that. Didn't want to insult your intelligence by presuming you didn't know better. No, don't worry. In the future, presume away. You need to build a loom to make cotton cloth. It will take some wood, but you've got plenty on your land. Right. So build a loom? That's all you need. Then you can make cloth on it. Come see me when that's done. Here's the corn for Sophia, Thomas. Thanks. She's a single mom running her business all on her own. She deserves all the help she can get. Uh-huh. Don't know why you've got that goofy grin on your face. Just a friend helping a friend. Why, is she say anything? It's not about what she says, Thomas. It's about... Okay, okay. Don't need advice from you. Anyhow, come see me on festival day. Sure. Why? Just do it.
I did it! I wove my own cloth! Well then, you're good to go. I sell mine to the general store. Oh, sure. Lena's the best. Yeah, she is the best. Uh, buyer in town. Always gives a fair price. She'll take any dyed cloth you make, too. If you want to make your own dyes and dye the cloth, you'll need a dyeing bath. Here is a blueprint for a dyeing bath to dye the cloth and recipes for the dyes themselves. The dyes can be made by crushing up the ingredients in a mortar and pestle. I guess you can have a couple of my dyes too. Thomas, thank you for all of this help. I really appreciate it. I know. Like I said, I promised your grandma I'd pitch in and I will. I was hoping you might have something that the new meteorologist needs. Oh, right. I met her. She's like really into tea. Uh-huh. Do you have any silk thread? Ah, I've got something better. Silk worms. Ew. Nah, they're dope. You just gotta feed them mulberry leaves every day and on day 10, ta-da, my friend! <laughs> totally organic silk. But you gotta build these little buddies a box first. Then they'll be like, uh, totally chill. Thank you. 